Hi, I, 23, female, recently got engaged to my boyfriend, 26, of one year. I also have a two, turning three in a few months, year old daughter from a past relationship. I got pregnant in my final year of college with my boyfriend at the time and decided to keep the baby because I'd always wanted to be a mother and the timing just felt right. Her father is not in the picture anymore and we broke up a few days after I conveyed my decision to keep the baby since he wasn't ready to be a dad just yet. I was okay with that, honestly, so after that, it was just me and my daughter. I met my fiancé through a mutual friend who insisted that we'd be perfect together. Even though I wasn't looking to date at any time, her insistence made me agree to a date and I ended up having a great time. I'd been on several dates ever since I had my daughter, but most guys ran the other way as soon as I told them that I was a mom. My fiancé was different though and seemed to be accepting of it. After a few dates, I introduced him to my daughter and they bonded instantly as well. So after three months, when my fiancé asked if we should move in together, I said yes because it would be easier to make rent and was more convenient than traveling to see each other every other day. We've been living together for quite a while now and even though it's just been a year, it felt like we'd known each other for ages. So last week when he asked me to marry him while we were celebrating our first anniversary, I said yes, of course. I was a bit hesitant since we'd just been together for a year and it seemed too soon. But even when I had chosen to have my daughter, people had believed that it was too soon for me to become a mother and that had ended up being the best decision of my life. So why not give this a shot as well? My parents were happy for me when I told them this news, but it was no comparison to how his family reacted when he told them about it. He'd video called them the night we got engaged and as soon as I showed them the ring they erupted into cheers and hoots which was fine. But my future sister-in-law's reaction took me by surprise. She started bawling her eyes out and kept thanking God which I felt was a bit extreme but didn't question it because it felt rude. Her little brother was getting married so of course she was happy about it and I didn't think about her reaction much. Two days ago my fiancé started planning for a road trip to the beach, which happens to be my daughter's favorite place so that we can properly celebrate our engagement with my daughter present. It seemed like a wholesome idea and we were really excited for it as well, so yesterday we finally left. It was going to be a four-hour drive and my daughter always falls asleep while traveling, so it was the perfect opportunity for us to talk about our future as well. Initially, we discussed buying a new house, since both of us were making enough money now to consider it. While I was still talking out of nowhere, he asked me to wake my daughter up so that she could enjoy the trip more actively. I told him that it was better for her to sleep through the car ride or else she'd get cranky once we reached the beach, and he said something along the lines of how he was saying it for my own good and that I needed to enjoy my time with her since it was probably going to be the last few days I get to spend with her anyway. I asked him what he meant by that since he'd said something really strange and ominous and he took a deep breath and told me to bring out some papers from the glove compartment. I took them out and began reading and to my horror, I realized that these were adoption papers. He explained that he wanted me to sign away my parental rights to my daughter so that his sister could adopt her. His sister was 30 years old and had been struggling to conceive for a while now, which had led to a lot of strain in her marriage as well. I knew about all of that since he told me earlier and while I did feel sorry for her, this proposition that my fiancé had come up with was just bizarre. Initially, I laughed it off because I truly believed that he was joking, but when he didn't smile, I realized that he was totally serious. I started panicking because here I was trapped in a car with this man who wanted me to give my daughter away to his sister as if that was something people normally do, and we were on the highway as well, so it was a pretty lonely stretch of road as well. 
I kept talking about other things as if nothing weird had happened so that he wouldn't catch on to my panicked state of mind and do something rash. And he seemed to ease up a bit as well. I was keeping an eye out for gas stations so that I could make an excuse to just get out of the damn car and make a run for it because after what he'd suggested, I just didn't feel safe with him. When I spotted one, I made him stop and told him that I needed to use the washroom and even managed to take my daughter with me, claiming that she probably needed to use the washroom as well and we better not risk anything just because she was sleepy. As soon as he stopped, I grabbed my purse and my daughter and went to the washroom. He was buying some soda from the shop at the gas station and as soon as I saw that he wasn't looking, I made a run for it. I know there must have been at least a thousand better ways for me to deal with the situation, but at the time, I couldn't think of any other way. In hindsight, probably taking his car and driving away would have been a safer bet than what I did. But I wasn't thinking straight and just wanted to put as much distance as I could between me and him. I don't think he noticed that I was gone for several minutes afterward and only texted me after 15 minutes of running. Thankfully, I'm used to running in the morning so I was able to make a solid 20 minutes before I stopped for breath. I felt dehydrated and was on the verge of fainting and it definitely wasn't an easy task to run with the toddler in my arms. It was a miracle that I hadn't fallen over. Luckily, there was a car that stopped to check on me when they saw me panting on the side of the road and my daughter holding my hand looking confused. It was a group of women headed back to the city from a bachelorette and they sensed that something was off about me and my daughter standing all by ourselves at the side of the road, so they pulled over. It was probably through divine intervention and those women were nothing less than angels to me who offered to drive me back once I was able to explain that I needed to get away from my fiancé. They didn't even bother to ask me to elaborate on the situation and just told me to get in the car immediately with my daughter and that I could explain on the way and after I'd gotten some water in my system. Truly, I'm ever so grateful that they pulled over for me and I'll owe them forever. Anyway, I turned off my phone and within an hour we were back in the city. I told them that I'd take a cab back home, but they insisted on dropping me wherever I needed to go, so I told them to drop me off at my parents' house since I didn't feel comfortable going back to my own. They did so willingly and even gave me their numbers since one of them was a lawyer, and after I'd explained what my fiancé had said, she told me to reach out to her if I needed any help at any point. After I got home, I told my parents about what had happened as well, and they looked equally alarmed by it, so I knew that I wasn't overreacting. They told me to move out with my daughter as soon as possible and call off the wedding because what my fiancé has said was just bizarre and unexpected. I didn't even turn my phone back on until after dinner. My inbox was filled with messages from my fiancé, initially asking about my whereabouts and how he was getting worried, but later on, I guess he realized that I'd made a run for it after his statement and started talking about how he was disappointed in me and my lack of faith in him. He told me to call him when I felt ready to talk, but I didn't even know what to say. I already had several missed calls from him. While I was checking my texts, he called me again and I decided to answer it because I knew that I couldn't avoid him forever, obviously. He sounded sad and distant when he asked me where I was and it felt strange but I told him that I didn't want to tell him where I was and that the whole adoption thing had thrown me off today. He wanted me to come back home and discuss things with him before I reached any conclusion but I said no and that if he wanted to talk to me then he'd have to come to a place where I felt comfortable. I think he felt hurt and insulted by the insinuation that he was someone I had to feel unsafe around but I didn't care. What he had said was not okay and I truly didn't know if I could trust him after that. We got into an argument where he said that I was being unfair towards him and that we could still sort things out if I wanted to make this work. But if I suddenly started treating him like a stranger who couldn't even bring myself to trust, then it'd be incredibly difficult for him. I told him that after what he'd suggested, I did feel like he was an absolute stranger and that I couldn't trust him because of that. If he'd known me as well as I thought he did, 
then he'd also know that I would never, ever give my daughter up no matter what happened. To think that he even considered for a second that I would let his sister adopt my daughter while I was still well and alive was just ridiculous. He hadn't even discussed this with me. So I don't know why he just assumed I'd be willing to do something like this. He kept trying to convince me to just come back home once, but I wasn't going to agree to that under any circumstances. In the end, he just asked me straight up if I felt unsafe with him now, and I said yes, without missing a beat. He hung up, and I could tell that he was really hurt by what I'd said about feeling unsafe around him and not trusting him anymore. AITA for saying that to him? Update 1. Hey there, it's been a week since I last spoke to my fiancé and he finally met me today. I'd made it very clear that I wasn't going to come back home and that if he really had anything to say to me after everything that had happened, then he could visit me at my parents' place and we'd talk then. That was a week ago. I'd sent him a long text after he hung up, but he never bothered to reply to it. Today he showed up to speak to me. It felt really odd and awkward, but I knew I had to get through it somehow and get the closure I needed. So we got to talking and he started off by apologizing for springing the whole adopting thing onto me without a warning. He admitted that he should have asked me about it first instead of just assuming that I'd be okay with it. It was his sister's idea to bring it up during the trip so that I'd be in a good mood and would be open to discussion as well, but he didn't realize that it would make me react that way. He told me that he and his sister had been discussing this for a while now, and that's why she'd become so overwhelmed with emotions when he told them about his engagement, because that meant that she was closer to having a baby of her own. Her husband was almost on the verge of divorcing her because of all her troubles with conception, and she was terribly depressed about all of it which is why he'd suggested that she adopt my daughter. He'd believed that it would be good for his sister and also that it would give the two of us a fresh start, especially me. I didn't understand what he meant by fresh start because, to my knowledge, I'd never made it seem as though I regretted my past or whatever. In fact, I'd made it very obvious that I'd had my daughter by choice and even though most people considered me too young to be a mother, I didn't mind it. Yes, I'd made a lot of sacrifices along the way, but it was my choice to do so, and I was okay with it. He was taken aback by this and told me that he'd always thought I was putting up a strong front so that people wouldn't think any less of me. He'd always just assumed that despite whatever I said about not having regrets, I still didn't mean it and would be glad to have a shot at living my youth again. I don't know why he'd thought I was pretending to be happy with my choices and hiding my true feelings because I think anyone with even half a brain would be able to tell that I'm the happiest version of myself when I'm with my daughter. My fiancé had apparently promised his sister that once we got engaged, he talked to me about signing away my parental rights and let her adopt my daughter so that she could fulfill her dream of motherhood and I could live my life unburdened. I told him that I didn't consider my daughter a burden in the least and I was sorry that his sister was going through so much, but unfortunately she'd have to go about the adoption like anyone else because I wasn't giving my daughter up. He seemed to be a little taken aback by my decision after a few seconds asked me if I was sure about what I was saying since my sister would be doing me a huge favor by adopting my daughter. He went on to explain to me how kids are difficult to raise and that letting his sister adopt my daughter would be her taking a huge burden off my shoulders and it would also allow us to start a family of our own. I was getting annoyed by his repeated implications that my daughter was a burden on me and that I'd be better off without her so I snapped at him and said that I'm not giving my daughter up under any circumstances and he's probably the one who had an issue with my life choices and he was also free to walk out of my life. I had chosen this life for myself and anyone who didn't respect it didn't deserve to be a part of it anyway. We ended up fighting once more and parted ways bitterly. He kept trying to convince me that he was right and that I'd regret passing up on this opportunity later on and even said that no other man would put up with this. 
I just had to ask him to leave eventually because I was simply emotionally exhausted from this discussion. I felt as if I'd been with a complete and total stranger this past year because despite living with me and my daughter for the past few months, it felt as if he'd learned nothing about me and the relationship I have with my daughter. It was wrong and just very insulting for him to imply that I wasn't ready to handle this even though I'd been handling it since before he even met me. I guess the relationship is over now and I'm going to go and collect my things from his place within the next few days. I just feel horrible that it had to end this way over some ridiculous and bizarre argument about my daughter. I'm just glad she's not yet old enough to understand what's happening so she's not going to ask any hard to answer questions either. I feel terrible that I even introduced her to this guy in the first place and rushed into this relationship and engagement. Update 2. Three days since we broke up, so to speak, and today I finally went to his house to get my stuff. I asked a friend of mine to help me out because I didn't want to go alone and I'm thankful that I did because when I did get there, he refused to open the door and told me to go away. I explained to him that I was only there to collect my things and that was all, but he wasn't willing to listen. Now, obviously, that was going to be an issue if I couldn't get my own things back. So far, I've been wearing my mother's clothes at home, but I had to go back to work in two days. I also needed my laptop that I'd left at his workplace and his decision to not let me get my things was proving to be inconvenient for me. I tried to reason with him, but he just straight up refused and told me to get the hell off his property or he'd report me to the cops. That's when I lost my temper because this guy had already wasted so much of my time and now was threatening to call the cops on me as if I was the one doing something wrong. So I told him to go ahead and try it and I'd tell them exactly why I was here and how he was the one troubling me right now. When I said that, he finally opened the door even though he was quite reluctant about it. I walked in and saw that his family was visiting and looked extremely annoyed to see me there. His sister had the audacity to glare at me and turn away as if I was something horrible. I guess he told them that I'd declined his proposition and had also dumped him over what he'd said so they weren't too happy with me right now. But I didn't care about any of it. I was just there to get my things and leave. I packed my stuff up along with my daughter's clothes and toys in about 20 minutes with my friend helping me to work as fast as we humanely could so that we could get out of there since I really didn't feel like spending more time in their negativity. After we were done, I did one final sweep of what used to be our shared bedroom and even though I felt disappointed, I knew that I had to go. Before leaving, I told him that I'd send someone to get the pram and toddler bed later on, but his sister intervened and told me that whatever belonged to me had to be gone right now or she'd throw that filth out. I absolutely didn't like the way she referred to my daughter's stuff as filth especially given the fact that she was the one trying to adopt her. I told her that whatever filth was in the house belonged to me and she had no right to even touch it. And I guess everyone in the room knew that I wasn't just referring to my daughter's things. She flared up and started accusing me of depriving her of a child and my daughter of a stable future since I would never be able to handle being a single mom at such a young age. That was really a laughable thing to say because, like I've already said, I've been handling it for a while now and I'm doing just fine. We were about to get into an argument but my ex fiance interrupted me and told me to just leave, now that I'd taken whatever I needed, and said that he dropped the rest off himself. He seemed really resigned and I felt like crap at that moment. But I had nothing else to say either, so I drove off with my friend and reached home just a few hours ago. It was a crappy and weird day, and the only good thing was my daughter being overjoyed to see me after she woke up from her nap. That was what made it all worth it. I'm already looking for a place, even though my parents want me to continue living with them for a while. But I've always been way too independent, and I like it that way. Anyway, I'm hoping that today was my last interaction with my fiancé or his sister. Update 3 
Two weeks have passed since the last update and last night my, my fiancé dropped my daughter's bed off. My daughter was really happy to see him again and it absolutely broke my heart. He seemed pleased to see her too but I knew that despite the picture perfect family that we seemed to be on paper, we weren't going to work out in real life, at least not after what happened. Once again he apologized for everything and even for whatever his sister had said the last time that we'd met, but it didn't matter to me anymore. We gave back each other's rings and that was that. My daughter didn't want to let him go once she saw him and almost had to be dragged off of him while he left. By then both of us were crying and didn't even bother trying to hide it because we knew that on some level we did love each other and would have been perfect but none of that mattered anymore. I felt particularly bad for my daughter because she was losing a father figure and was way too young to even understand what was happening. After he left, I cried myself to sleep while my mother dealt with my daughter and put her to bed because she seemed really upset. I guess I might be staying with my parents for a while after all since I really cannot handle being on my own right now. I just hope I can move on from this soon and be happy again. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.